What theory of knowledge does is I say, take that backpack off, zip it, and dump it all out on the table. Because my job as your teacher, theory of knowledge teacher, is not to give you more to add in the backpack, but for you to stand back and walk around that desk, walk around that table, and really look at the knowledge that you've acquired. Really be aware of yourself as a learner and what um, films and biases and ideas you have going on. And one of the key things that I use very early on is to talk to my students about the difference between empathy and sympathy. Because if we're going to be active participants in this global society, we absolutely need to know the difference. So I have a student here who I asked to come and present the assessment piece that he did because it's really important. I want our parents and our students to know what are we doing in our classes. So Mr. Patrick, come on up here. All right, let me set the context here. So, at this point, imagine you all are uh, members of the board of a museum, a museum that's gonna be opening up in San Antonio. And the purpose of the museum is to get people actively involved through the use of empathy. And so all of my students had to think of an issue that's either local or global, and create a presentation, because you as board members need to vote what will be the exhibits that are in this new museum the museum is being put together. Good evening, everybody. Can everybody hear me? Everyone can hear me? Awesome. Can everybody hear me? Awesome. So I'm Mark Patrick. I'm a junior in the IB program, and this is my empathy presentation. This is my empathy presentation. After the fight. In World War II, 16 million troops were deployed overseas, and just over 416,000 were killed in action. This means that 2.5% of our soldiers were returning home in coffins from the second bloodiest world war. After 9-11, 2.5 million troops were deployed and just under 7,000 were killed in action. While every single life is honored, this means that only 0.27% of our soldiers were dying. Statistically, that is a great change. Improvements in body armor, weaponry, tactics, and individual training proved effective in helping our soldiers return home safe. The number that is often overlooked is the amount of injured veterans. 52,000 veterans currently right now are suffering from lifelong severe critical injuries. 1,400 of which include amputees who are often missing two or more limbs. This number does not even include the 320,000 soldiers with traumatic brain injuries that often result in PTSD and neurological damage. 15% of post 9-11 soldiers have lifelong injuries. I'll give you a minute to think about that. 15%, one in seven. And another way to put it, and another way to put it, for every three American military deaths in both world wars, there are five post 9-11 troops who are suffering from injuries. For the purpose of this exhibit, I'll be focusing primarily on amputees. While they are one of the smaller groups of veterans, they are more of the iconic and recognized due to organizations like the Wounded Warrior Project. A complex exhibit would not be required at all. Instead, a series of small experiences would be asked of the attendee. You and I expect that when we wake up in the morning, both of our hands and feet will work. What happens when they don't? What happens when you struggle to perform the most basic tasks as you get ready for your day? The first part of the exhibit would ask that you would simply put on a shirt and tie with only one hand, or to pull on a pair of pants without using your legs. You'd be able to see the emotional strain our veterans go through as they have to adapt to this new life and get used to something that is so foreign to every one of us. After you got dressed, you would be, there would be a wheelchair sitting outside the room and you'd be asked to ride around in it for the rest of the exhibit. The realization would dawn on you as you would see that the amount of limitation is put on you by this wheelchair as you couldn't go up a flight of stairs or simply reach, reach for a cup out of a cupboard without falling. You'd be able to appreciate and realize how these people would feel as they go from the strong protectors of America to the cultural assumption and association of someone 
of someone in a wheelchair to someone who is weak. Finally, the day would end with a simulation of the intense physical rehabilitation these soldiers have to go through so they can sit up straight again, or walk again, or adapt to their new prosthetics. You'd be able to see and realize that they have to adapt to a new lifestyle that is so foreign and bizarre to us. As you look at this woman who lost her leg, or this man who jumped on a grenade for his buddies, I would ask that you would take a minute to wiggle your toes and to touch your fingertips, and to appreciate the sensation you have in them. I would, take, I would ask that we'd all take a minute to realize these soldiers' sacrifices. As retired Marine Colonel Carl Melantis once said, when the peace treaty is signed, the war isn't over for the veterans. An exhibit of this caliber would offer every man, woman, and child who came through the doors the opportunity to feel the slightest bit of empathy as they walked in the shoes of soldiers who are critically injured for the sake of our nation. Thank you and enjoy the evening.